Hello and welcome to my studio. Uh, today I thought I'd make a short demonstration video just showing you some of the methods and techniques that I use when I'm painting on glass. Um, I teach traditional glass painting here at the studio and at Ely Cathedral and we normally use brushes and we mix our paint with water and a little bit of gum arabic but there are many other mediums that you can use to create lots of different effects so today I'm going to walk you through some of the techniques that I use and some of the methods hopefully you'll find it useful hopefully you'll find it interesting if so leave a like leave some comments and suggestions as to maybe think things that you'd like to see in the future and I'll gladly make more videos like this one. So today I'm going to be making a sample panel for a new exhibition that's happening at the moment through the British Society of Master Glass Painters. They've invited members to submit a panel on any topic at all, which is fantastic. So I'm creating a self-portrait and it's a little bit of a venture into the dark um, because I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to resolve all the design issues, but together we'll walk through the process and I'll show you stage by stage how I mix the paints, how I apply them to the glass. So hopefully at the end of it, we'll have a panel that's fit for the exhibition that I can submit. Um, I'll be using a dipping pen uh, and I'll be using oils to mix with the pigment, so specifically clove oil and lavender oil. And I'll just show you the way that I prepare the pigment in order to work with a dipping pen. And I'll use some other techniques as well to create different effects. I certainly like to see how other glass artists work. I always find it helpful in picking up tips and tricks to see their methods. So hopefully you too will find this of interest. So without any further ado, Let's get into making a sample panel. We will need a mixing palette. I usually use a glass palette uh, with some stoppers underneath. Our trusted palette knife, of course. The paint that we're using today is Roish paint, which is fantastic. Tracing black and American paint, really nice to work with. The main medium for mixing is clove oil, but also we'll be adding a little bit of lavender oil. This is personal preference, but I like to add a little bit of lavender oil to it. A kilner jar or an equivalent jar that's airtight is really useful as well together with your dipping pen of choice. So don't forget a couple of pipettes as well for mixing the oils together. You don't want the same pipette for different oils. So you'd mix your paint in the same way that you'd mix with water, grinding it very carefully of course. Even although the Roche paints are particularly well made, you still have to grind them for a good five minutes before you can put them into the jar. To this we'll then add our oil. I'm adding approximately twice as much clove oil as I am lavender oil. Using different pipettes of course so that they don't contaminate both the containers of oil. Once we've got an uh, a reasonable amount of oil in. We mix and we mix until everything is well mixed in and then you leave it for 24 hours. Don't use the pigment until it's sat for 24 hours. Okay, now we're ready to experiment with the consistency of it. After giving it a good mix again, we're just going to test the pigment. So generally speaking, you should be able to get four or five lengths out of a dip into the pigment. Um, as you can see here, it's working particularly well. We need to make sure that the pigment is strong um, and that it's consistent. Too much oil and it'll become a little bit too watery and too little oil, it'll become too thick. So um, also just fill in some of the areas with larger areas of pigment and let that sit for a few minutes because if there's too much oil, what you tend to find is the pigment draws into the center and doesn't have a nice dense finish. But that appears to be all working well, so we're ready to start actually drawing with it. And again, mixing the pigment really well, it does tend to settle after a while, so you just have to sort of generally keep mixing the pigment. So you would draw on glass in exactly the same way that you would draw with paper and you would just be as casual and as free in, in drawing on glass as you would be in with drawing in paper. It's a lovely way to actually work. It's very precise, it's very controlled and it's really easy to sort of create effects that you want. Once you're happy with what you've painted, it goes into the kiln and gets fired in the normal way. So then, then we're ready to develop some shading. So I want to go over some, some shading techniques with you. Just a couple of little ways of adding interesting effects to spice up some painting techniques. This is not something you would use normally with conservation work, but certainly with new work, this is a good method. So applying a thin wash to the surface of the glass, then using a badger brush, we badger the pigment until it's nice and even. 
and then you can apply a little bit of water to it. Water is a great medium for creating certain effects such as this. If you allow the water to dry using a hair dryer or naturally, you can then badger it again to create some really interesting marbling effects. As you can see here, it's a, it's a case of playing around and just having fun using your materials in interesting ways. So this is a lovely effect that to, to create interesting sort of textures using the medium of glass paint. And you can create effects like this. Um, it's, 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 it's a nice effect. This is using an astringent, which is a little bit of um, alcohol in the mixture, which creates a slightly more dramatic effect. But again, just spraying it as you would in the previous clip. You can also use combs. So if, again, if you create a pigment wash on the surface of the glass, you can create interesting effects. I play around with this quite a lot in my glass projects for churches, etc. Because you can sort of almost create a woodcut feel to it, which I really like on larger scale projects. It's a really nice method and it's, it's, it's it again, can augment what you're creating. So you can use it as part of your other techniques like this to sort of add another layer of density and flavor to the piece. And once you've applied your pigments, you can scratch and you can uh, remove areas of pigment until you're happy with what you're, what you're creating. So we're still in work in progress here. I'm playing around with how to add color to it. I'm not entirely sure what the best method is. So I kind of settled on just using small pieces of tiles of glass, almost like a mosaic. I wanted to create something which didn't have too much lead line. I wanted to create a lightness of touch because the actual painting is quite dense, it's quite dark as a self-portrait. So I wanted to add color to it without having lead lines, etc. And I feel that this is the way forward. So I'm going to create uh, an almost like a little double glazed unit with a uh, semi-opalescent glass behind. As you can see here, I'm attaching it all together, dry glazed in place with opalescent glass behind and all these little pieces of colored glass together held in place with lead around the outside, which will hopefully hold everything in place. Obviously, this is not suitable for outside use, but I think it works really well. I think it's a nice little panel that sort of diffuses itself and creates an interesting effect. So this is the final result using the different techniques that I've that I've shown you earlier. And I'm glad to say that it's now in the exhibition as part of the British Society of Master Glass Painters website. So um, check it out. So thanks again for staying to the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments below. I also encourage you to check out the British Society of Master Glass Painters website for all their upcoming events, shows, lectures, etc. It's a great resource for all things to do with stained glass. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.